Littleton, Colorado is one of the best suburbs to live in in all of the Denver metro area for lots of reasons. And in fact, in 2022, livability.com declared Littleton, Colorado, the 32nd best city to live in in all of America. Now it's a big city. There's parts of it that are in the county area and parts of it that are in the city proper in the Littleton city limits. So you might be wondering like, what is the best neighborhood? Where are the best areas that we should go take a look at when we're thinking about moving to Littleton, Colorado? Well, today I'm gonna share the top five neighborhoods in Littleton, Colorado, and stick around to the end because we are going to talk about new construction homes and what that means for your property tax bill, metro taxes, because two of the neighborhoods I'm talking about today are brand new communities. Now in no particular order, let's get started. The first neighborhood we're going to talk about is the Grant Ranch community. And Grant Ranch sits about central of the northern end of the Littleton area. Now Grant Ranch was built in the late 1990s to about the 2000s, so 96 to about 2000. And there's about 1,400 homes there in the Grant Ranch community. And this is a master planned community and I'm gonna show you all of the amenities that the area and the neighborhood has to offer. Now the community is centered around the lake, which is right there in the neighborhood and the Grant Ranch Village Center, which is the clubhouse. Now this community has tons of activities. It's got all of the clubs, it has all of the events, the parties, they throw a big 4th of July event every year. They have Santa comes, the Easter Bunny comes, they have the book clubs, the classes, you name it, this community has it right there at the Grant Ranch Village Center. And it's what makes this community feel like a community. Now you could see that the pool area overlooks the lake, so that's kind of awesome. And then there's also this huge or really great playground right next to the pool. There's tennis courts, there's pickleball courts, plus there's other neighborhood parks throughout the community. And then in regards to the lake, you can take boats on the lake. There are no gas powered boats allowed. They're all electric or sailboats. You can paddle board on the lake, you can kayak on the lake. There's areas right around the lake, there's a small marina, but there's also areas where you can store your kayaks and your paddle boards so you don't have to carry them from your house down to the lake each time you wanna use them, which is really great. And there are houses that sit right on the lake too, that back to the lake, so you can get that lake view. Now, one of the great things about the Grant Ranch community is they're all different types of housing styles. Now, it is mostly two-story tract homes. There are some ranch level homes that you can find in there. There's patio homes, there's custom homes, semi-custom homes, there's tract homes, there's condos, and there's townhomes all located within this community. Now, the great thing about the patio homes that are there, a lot of times what I see when people move to Grant Ranch, well, the parents or the grandparents move with them and they like those patio homes. Now, anyone can live in the patio homes. Now, a lot of seniors and the older crowd do attract to those patio homes because of the low maintenance aspect of it. But again, anyone can live there. Anyone can buy in those patio homes. And the prices in Grant Ranch, well, they range from about the mid 400s for a condo up to the 600s for a single family home. And those go all the way up to the $1.8 million range. So there is lots of variety in price points and housing styles right here in Grant Ranch. Now, one of the other things that's really great about Grant Ranch is it's located very close to Clement Park. Now, Clement Park is a huge, it's ginormous park in Littleton. And I did a whole video about it and I'm gonna link it right up here above. So go ahead and watch that one when you're done with this one. But Clement Park has ball fields, it has a skate park, and it has a huge adaptive playground so people of all abilities can participate in the fun there at the playground. Now from Grant Ranch, you can get to downtown Littleton where they have the mom and pop shops, um, restaurants, bars, things like that. You can get there in about 10 minutes and in about a five to seven minute drive on the other direction, there's all the shopping you could ever want. So you've got Trader Joe's, Costco, TJ Maxx, Home Depot, you name it, it is there, you get the picture. And finally, let's talk schools for Grant Ranch. Now, Grant Ranch sits in two different school districts. The north side is Denver Public Schools, 
The south side is Jeffco Public Schools or Jefferson County School District. So if schools are important to you, you can check out all of the schools in the area on niche.com or greatschools.org and I highly suggest that you do that. If schools are important to you though, then just go ahead and check them out and do your research. Now, neighborhood number two is the downtown Littleton area. So if you're looking for a neighborhood that has no HOA and is walkable, then the downtown area might be for you. Now, when I say walkable, yes, we do need cars here in the metro area to get around, but walkable meaning you can walk to the downtown area where there's the mom and pop shops, there's restaurants, there's bars, there's breweries, there's a theater there, there's coffee shops. So if you wanna go walk to those kind of things, then the downtown Littleton area might be for you. Now in this area, there are some super cool historic homes. There's some that were built in the early 1900s. You have like the 1920 bungalows, you have mid-century homes built in the 50s, and then you have some that have been torn down and new homes have been built in its place. Now, the cool thing about the downtown Littleton area is it is all different. Each home has a different style, a different character. There are no tract homes here in this area. So if you want some character and you want some culture, because like I said, there's this really cool theater in the downtown area. Now it's a small theater, but what I like about it is it's good for all ages and it's very easy to get to and easy to maneuver. So if you don't want to take people like my parents, when I take them out to the theater, it's really hard on them to go to downtown Denver, to deal with the parking, to go walk very far to get to the theater where this local little one right here in Littleton, it's easy. It's easy for them to get out of the car, walk right into the theater. They don't have to do long walks. And it's really great for kids too, because it's small. You are so close to the actors, you can actually almost reach out and touch them. So it keeps everybody's attention. And I've seen some really great plays there and they're not expensive. So it's a great afternoon for everyone. Now the downtown area has lots of things going on as well. They have Western Welcome Week. They have Santa and the Easter Bunny that comes. There's tons of parades that happen right there in downtown Littleton. They do block parties. They even have a zombie crawl and they have a candlelight walk. So there's always something going on in the downtown Littleton area. So if that's something that appeals to you and you wanna be able to walk to it, and you want some character in the homes, well, then the downtown Littleton area might be the neighborhood for you. And then finally, there's also a light rail stop right there in downtown Littleton. So if you work up in downtown Denver and don't wanna live up there, or you don't wanna to drive to work and deal with paying for parking and finding parking up in downtown Denver, then taking that light rail is a really great option. Or even if you just wanna go up to a big sporting event or a big concert or some of the cultural activities like the plays and things up in downtown Denver and don't wanna drive, that light rail is right there in downtown Littleton. You can walk to it. It is like less than half a block from the downtown area. And then the school district for the downtown area is Littleton Public Schools. Now Littleton Public Schools always ranks in the top five districts in the entire state of Colorado. And then home prices for that downtown Littleton area, well, it's getting harder and harder to find a home, a single family home in the 400s. You can still find a few in the 500s and they go on up into the $2 million range. So you've got something for everyone there from the cute bungalows, the older 1950s homes, to some of the teardowns that are built brand new to some bigger luxury homes with some character. Now, neighborhood number three is the Ken Carroll area. Now, Ken Carroll is split into two different areas. One's the valley, one's the ranch. The valley sits on the other side or the west side of the hogback. So you feel like you're kind of away from it all. Now the hogback is just a small mountain or small foothill that you have to drive through in order to get out to the valley. But again, it gives you that you're away from it all feeling. In reality, you're really only about five, seven minutes from a grocery store shopping and the local high school. But in the valley, you are surrounded by tons of natural beauty. There are foothills all around you. There's a lot of hiking trails and paths right there in the valley. And you also get some wildlife there. So you will get tons of deer. You will get some elk at times. You might even get some bears at times. 
You get the wild cats, the bobcats, the mountain lions, things like that at times as well. And then you always get the squirrels and the bunnies and those kind of things too. But the beauty of the valley and the open space in the valley and the wildlife, it just makes you feel like you're not part of the big city. Now, both the valley and the ranch are a master plan community also. So there is an HOA and there's tons of amenities in these communities as well. Now, once you're a part of the Ken Carroll master plan community or Ken Carroll Ranch Association, you can participate in the activities that take place in the valley and those that take place in the ranch. So it's kind of nice because there's two different pools, one in the valley, one in the ranch. So if you get tired of the one in the neighborhood you live in, well, you can go to the other. It's a short five minute drive. And the HOA is not expensive at all. It's like $65 a month and you get tennis courts, pickleball courts, you get the pools, you get fitness center. You also have clubhouse where they have all of the clubs and the activities and the events. And there's also an equestrian center in the valley as well. Plus there's tons of parks in the community too. Now in the Valley, there's also a K through eight school and that's part of Jeffco Public School District. Now Ken Carroll was built in the late seventies to early nineties and there's custom homes there, semi-custom homes, there's single family tract homes. There are some condos and townhomes that are part of the Ken Carroll Ranch Association, but most of the community is single family homes. And the prices in Ken Carroll, well, they range from the mid 600s up to about 4 million. So if you want a neighborhood where you feel like you're away from it all, like you're outside of the big city, if you wanna be surrounded by the natural beauty of the foothills and wildlife and still participate in a HOA that has that huge community feel, well, then the Ken Carroll area might be the spot for you. Now, neighborhood number four is the Solstice community. And Solstice sits on the very south end of the Littleton area. Now, Solstice is a brand new community. It started being built, or I think the first people moved in in 2020. And it's being built by Shea Homes. Now, there's lots of different floor plans. I think there's up to nine or 10, maybe 12 different floor plans there in the community and you can still get new construction home. We are starting to see some resale homes in the Solstice community now, because it's been a couple years since the first people have moved in. And I've done several home tours in the Solstice community, so I'm gonna go ahead and link those above. If you wanna see what does a new model home tour, what does it look like, go ahead and check that out. Now, Solstice is all single family homes. There's no townhomes, no condos, and the prices in there range from about the mid sixes to 700s up to 1.2, 1.3 million dollars. Now this is another neighborhood where you feel like you're away from it all because you kind of are. Um, there is a grocery store out there, that's about a 10 minute drive, but this does sit on the south end of Littleton and you basically get 180 views, 180 degree views of the foothills. There's not much out there other than these new home communities that are being built. So you do feel like you're away from it all and you kind of are away from it all. Now, a few things to note about the Solstice community. The High Line Canal runs right through the community. Now the canal, I don't mean like a water canal. Um, it is a trail. It's a 71 mile trail that goes from the Southern end of Littleton all the way up to the Northeastern end of Denver. And you can walk on the trail, jog on the trail, bike on the trail. It's very pretty and very different throughout those 71 miles. So it's kind of a cool thing that it kind of starts right there in the Solstice community. Now, the other cool thing about Solstice is that it's right next to Chatfield State Park and you can walk there basically. So the south entrance of Chatfield State Park is literally maybe a five minute walk, if that, from parts of Solstice. Now Chatfield State Park, it's pretty amazing. They have a huge lake in there where you can take gas powered boats um, onto the lake. You can take jet skis onto the lake. So that's kind of fun for the day. They have a big marina there as well. People also paddleboard on the lake and they have kind of little pockets or different fingers off of the lake. And this year, because the water level was so high, it was super cool because when you were paddleboarding, you were like paddleboarding amongst the trees. Now, if you haven't seen it, go to TikTok, go search Chatfield State Park paddleboarding and you'll see what I mean. It was super, super cool. Now there's miles of trails in Chatfield State Park that you can bike, walk, or run on. 
There is a campground in Chatfield State Park. So if you wanna go camping for the night, have that fire going, roast some s'mores, but you don't wanna drive far, well, it's right there in the neighborhood, basically in Solstice and even all of Littleton. It's just a 10 or 15 minute drive from any part of Littleton. So that's a fun night getaway as well. Now, I believe there's an equestrian center in Chatfield State Park. There's a bird watching area. There's an off dog leash park there in Chatfield as well. And there's always hot air balloons that are landing in the park. So that's kind of cool. And then finally, People train for triathlons there in Chatfield. So a lot of them will do their open water swim or train for their open water swim right there in the lake. There's kind of a separate section that they get to go to. And then if I didn't mention earlier, there's also a beach access. So you can go to the beach right there at Chatfield State Park as well. We don't get much of that here in Colorado. So back to Solstice, well, it is an HOA community, but it's a much smaller community. When it's completely built, I think it's gonna have about 1,100 homes in the entire community. Now there's an outdoor pool, there's a clubhouse. They have tons of activities. I mean, more so, I think, than any other neighborhood that I know. So all of the clubs, the classes, things like that, there's always something going on at the Solstice community. Now there is no school located right there in the community. All of the kids, whether it's elementary, middle school, or high school, they are all bused over to Highlands Ranch um, and participate in the schooling there, which is part of the Douglas County School District. I do think that there's plans though to build a elementary school right there in the neighborhood at Solstice though. Now the last neighborhood we're gonna talk about is the Sterling Ranch community. Now Sterling Ranch is very close to Solstice, but it has a very different feel. So where Solstice is about 1,100 homes, Sterling Ranch is gonna be about 12 thousand homes when it's completely built. It's also still in the building process, so you can get brand new homes, new construction homes there in Sterling Ranch, or there are resale homes available as well. Now there are multiple builders, many different builders in this 12,000 home community, so there's lots of things to pick from. Now at Sterling Ranch, you are kind of away from it all as well because the infrastructure hasn't been built yet, but you don't get that feeling like you're away from it all like you do in Solstice. So two different fields, even though the communities are very close together. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there is a grocery store and a small shopping center. It's about a five to 10 minute drive from both of those communities. So that is out there, but they are going to be adding and building all of the infrastructure. Once you get 12,000 homes, which will equate to 25 to 35,000 people out in that area where they're gonna have to bring the shopping in. So there is a Sterling Ranch hub though. And the idea of this hub is that there's things there that you use in your everyday life that you don't even need to leave the community for. So at the hub, there's a coffee shop, there's a brewery, there's an eye doctor, I believe there's a medical center, there's also a preschool right there. So a few of the things that you use in your normal everyday life. Now that hub or the coffee shop brewery were built for people who are working from home. So if you need a change of pace, a change of scenery while you're working from home, hop on over there. There are workstations at the coffee shop so you can grab a cup of coffee, get some work done, or grab a beer in the afternoon or maybe morning if you choose and get some work done as well. Now, Sterling Ranch is also a master plan community and it has a huge clubhouse. There's also the pools, the outdoor pools, the fitness center, and all of the other amenities that we discussed in the other HOA communities. In Sterling Ranch, there are single family homes, there are duplexes, there's townhomes, there's condos. So in that 12,000 home community, they're building something for anyone. But the thing to note about Sterling Ranch and Solstice is because they're newer communities, there are Metro District taxes. Now, Metro District taxes affect your property taxes and it could almost double your property taxes from some of these other communities that we discussed earlier. So it is something that you do need to be aware of and something you do need to budget for because all of that infrastructure, well, it's gotta be built by somebody, right? And it's gotta be paid for. So they pay for it through these Metro District taxes. And if you wanna see more information about the Metro District taxes, we'll check out this video right here. It's gonna provide you all of that information. So until next time, I will see you on the next video.